Hi, I'm Mark Levine, a professor of computer science at Birkbeck University of London. I'm also acting as head of the department. Um, what I'm going to do at the moment is give you a brief introduction to the research that we do in the department with reference to what we're interested in tonight. Um, and also a bit about my research. Um, it'll be followed uh, by one of the postdoctoral uh, researchers in our department, Dr. Martin Harris, who will talk specifically about several applications that we've been working together on. Uh, the department uh, is one of the first computer science departments uh, in the UK. Um, we've been going on for over uh, 50 years, and some seminal work in building hardware, computer hardware, has been done in the department. And if you look at our web pages, you'll find a nice video by one of our emeritus uh, researchers uh, about the history of computing in the department. Uh, moving on to the stuff that we do, I'd like to concentrate on the work that we do in data science. Um, this is on the boundary of AI uh, and the more on the application side uh, and I'll mention some of the research uh, that we do. So just to indicate the topics or some of the areas. For instance, we work on social networks uh, looking at, for instance, centrality measures in social networks and simulations with uh, real data and uh, artificial data, uh, trying to figure out how messages are sent within social networks. Um, we also look at uh, what we call human dynamics, which is looking at how social behavior can be explained with statistical models. Uh, a lot of the work within the group is applied, for instance, applied machine learning uh, for big data sets. Uh, an example of this uh, would, be <coughs> uh, would be the work uh, that I'm doing with some of my research uh, students. For example, we're looking at medical data and the idea is to look at free text medical data from forums, from Twitter, and to try and structure that using natural language uh, processing and using techniques such as neural networks and conditional random fields. Another one of my students is also looking at natural language, but here from the perspective of word embeddings in particular, uh, we're interested in phrase embeddings. Uh, which generalize the standard sort of word-to-vec type algorithms. We also do quite a bit of work in mobile computing. Uh, so, for example, we have uh, a project uh, run by one of the professors in the department, Professor George Russos, looking at how to build uh, devices uh, for people who have Parkinson's disease to help them uh, monitor their uh, usage of drugs and the uh, progression uh, of, of their uh, disease. I should mention uh, one of the other research groups uh, in the department which um, in a sense are also working on AI topics. Uh, this is our knowledge representation group. Um, this particular uh, group focuses on a semantic uh, web for instance, uh, knowledge graphs, uh, knowledge representation, ontologies, um, looking at both the algorithmic side and also from a logical perspective. Um, their work has uh, been published in AI conferences. Uh, moving on, I'd also like to mention uh, another initiative which we're involved in, and um, Dr. Harris is also involved in this initiative, and he will also uh, talk about it. It's the Institute of Coding, which is a national initiative um, sponsored by the UK government to look at how uh, we can enhance uh, the coding abilities of 
uh, various uh, groups uh, in, in the country, for instance, uh, upskilling, so people who are uh, working in companies uh, need to upskill their uh, coding abilities um, and uh, uh, sort of uh, they, they would like to know more about some of the technologies as they are uh, developing, for example, artificial intelligence data science. Um, in particular, with respect to the teaching in the department, uh, it's sort of related to this. Um, we have launched um, data science uh, programs, both at the undergraduate level and at the master's level. Um, our master's level course is quite unique in the sense that it allows um, students who have a degree in a subject other than computer science uh, to convert their speciality to computer science and in this particular case to data science. The, this course has been extremely successful. Um, there seems to be a very big uh, demand in industry for, for data science and this obviously uh, includes artificial intelligence uh, technologies uh, such as uh, neural networks, uh, big data, and others uh, which, which are getting a lot of press these days. Um, I'll hand you over to, to Dr. Harris to talk a bit more about the Institute of Coding and also to present two projects uh, which we've been jointly working on uh, which are related to AI. Bert Beck is excited to be a member of the Institute of Coding, or IOC, a newly founded national initiative led by universities and industry to address digital skill needs in industry sectors, including cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, data analytics, and coding. The government commissioned a review of employability among university graduates and found that computer science graduates were 25% more likely to be faced with unemployment compared to their colleagues in other disciplines. The IOC is made up of higher education institutions, large corporates, small and medium-sized enterprises or SMEs, established industry groups and experts in the delivery of distance and non-traditional learning. They have come together to address this digital skills gap in the UK through innovative collaboration, which has been made possible with £20 million worth of funding from the Office for Students and match funding from universities and industry partners. The vision is to develop and deliver innovative industry-focused computing education across the UK to ensure the UK is a leading contributor to AI research and technology, to enhance the education and employability of every IOC learner and to ensure that employers and individuals across the UK can access the skills they need to compete in the global digital market. This will be achieved by developing innovative, industry-focused higher education across the UK through accredited degree schemes and short courses aimed at professionals in a wide range of sectors and academic disciplines, as well as working to widen the participation of underrepresented groups, including women, returners to work, mature students, the unemployed young people, and hard-to-reach groups. The work undertaken by the IOC is divided into five main themes. Theme 1, University Learners, is looking to increase the number of graduates in Level 6 and Level 7 education. Theme 2, the Digital Workforce, looks to upskill those in the workforce who already have a computer science background but require top-up qualifications. Theme 3, Digitalizing Professionals, looks at addressing the digital skill needs in the industry sectors through modular training of those without a computer science background. Theme 4, widening participation, will improve access to digital skills for women returns to work and disadvantaged young people and BME communities through signposting and events. Theme 5, the Knowledge Exchange Hub, will develop a roadmap and policy documents which will propose ways in which skill needs might be addressed. Birkbeck is London's only specialist provider of evening graduate and postgraduate education. We are committed to delivering IOC courses and training to everyone regardless of their academic or vocational background. Part of our commitment to the IC will be to provide support and guidance to help all students thrive both during and after their studies through our links with industry partners. As part of this talk delivered by Birkbeck, I will introduce two projects that we've been working on in the computer science department. 
Our research largely focuses around delivering software and tools for the humanities and social scientists. One example of this, which incorporates AI, or machine learning in this instance, is the Sampler API. This software tool will help social scientists and humanities researchers automatically annotate their documents with named entities and sentiments by using a machine learning algorithm to learn from a small set of training data provided by the user. Another research project we're working on, we've been working on is a new type of interface for the humanities. This interface is composed of a holographic projector. The idea behind this holographic projector is to make our research accessible to the general public. We are often trapped in repeating modes of delivery whereby as software developers we expose our research and tools through web interfaces and uh, standalone applications. In this project <coughs> we sought to find a more innovative and in interesting um, form of user interface that the pub general public would be interested in interacting with. The idea of the holographic projector is that users in a gallery or a museum can submit voice queries which are picked up by a voice API which converts those to a text query which we then use to find 3D objects in the museum's collection. Institutions such as the British Library and the British Museum have recently been releasing a lot of their 3D objects online but as, the, as of yet there's no accepted interface that can be used to make them accessible and to the general public and also allow them to interact with them. The Sampler holographic user interface uses both speech and gestures in order to allow users such as the general public um, to access and browse and search these collections of 3D objects.